The question that keeps many people up at night is what happens to my fiat money wealth that I hold in stocks and bonds and 401ks and IRAs and all of these fiat money products? Well, what happens to that during a reset? That's the big question. Our research will give you the answers coming up. I'm Lynette Zhang and welcome to ITM Trading. Hello everyone, welcome to the Frequently Asked Questions, a new series that we're doing on this. And so uh, Eric goes through all of the questions and he said, I've got to do one on what happens to fiat money products. And frankly, we hear that a lot. So that's what we're going to talk about today. But what you need to remember is that at some point, all assets go to their intrinsic value. And everything moves from undervaluation to fair valuation to overvaluation to fair valuation and to undervaluation again. So whether it is a tangible asset or an intangible fiat product, the same thing is true. But there are a few different things about those intangible assets. Uh, we do know that a lot of that wealth is held inside of retirement plans. According to the second quarter in 2018, 28 trillion is fiat money retirement plans. And we also know that for banks to generate fees because these fees can be hidden inside of these different products and it's much harder for people to really understand what they're paying for. But a big huge key, even when the price goes up in nominal terms, the big huge key is that all of these, if it is intangible, if you do not hold it, it is made out of, 100% of it, is made out of fiat money. And by design, the most important function of fiat money is inflation, which robs you of your value over time. And, and I want you to keep in mind so strongly that one of the key originators for fiat money was a way to value labor and hold any excess labor that you generate today for use in the future. And the original goal, the individual's goal, is for that money to hold its value so that you're always fairly paid for your labor. The fiat money system itself is designed to do just the opposite. We've talked about this many times. We'll talk about it a whole lot more. But understand that even when nominal confusion and inflation makes it look like things are going up in number terms, if underneath it, what you're looking at are in this country dollars, but it could be euros or yen or, or any other fiat money, then the most important function is for inflation to remove that value so that you agree. And that is a huge key. So first we're gonna take a look at the stock market because inside of that 28 trillion in retirement assets, 46% of them are in the most expensive stock market in history. And we've also looked that valuations don't matter now I mean, hey, unprofitable firms are outperforming growth stocks with earnings. We've talked about this, the unicorns. It doesn't matter until it does. Do you think this time is different? I don't. On top of that, you have 27% of those retirement assets that are in the largest debt bubble in history. And essentially, we've been in that debt bubble 
as they have lowered the rates over the last 40 years to accommodate more and more and more debt. And in this way, they used up the biggest tool that they had for moderating inflation. Not letting it go away because, goodness gracious, they can talk about fighting it, but it's baked into the very system. So all the central banks are really trying to do is control the rate and speed of it, and interest rate and debt levels are one way for them to do it. And we've also talked many times about the pattern shift that occurred in 2007, 2008. And it's very obvious that it's in a breakdown pattern. And we're also in a period of time when global central banks, having really grown their balance sheets to unheard of heights, are attempting to quote unquote normalize and reduce their balance sheet. So inside of this breakdown pattern, global central banks are now tightening, at least for the moment. But make no mistake, and we really want to, since we know that the Federal Reserve went ahead and hiked rates against the other, uh, just, again, just the other day, threatening a flattening yield curve, which is something that I'm going to talk about next week. This could very well, and at some point it will. It's not that it could. According to the IMF, it does it 100% of the time. At some point, this will prick that bubble, even if they can he keep it hidden for a while. And it has done that in the past when the central banks have raised rates trying to moderate the rate and speed of the growth of debt. We're in that same place right now. This is not really good. Um, my bet is, is that they'll turn around and do more QE. But the point is, is that when rates go up, bond principles go down. And a lot of them, 27%, are held in retirement. 27% uh, uh, of that 28 uh, trillion is held inside of bond accounts, which takes us to other, because a lot of those bond mutual funds, frankly, have derivatives. So we're going to talk about that in a second, but 27 or 25 percent of retirement assets are held in other, which is illiquid real estate. I mean, you may want to sell a piece of property, but I can't tell you exactly how long that's going to take, and nobody can. And derivatives. And after the crisis that occurred in 2007, 2008, the derivatives have infiltrated our system even more. Not only have they grown in the banking sector, but they've also infiltrated the mutual funds. So you could be sitting on them. I'm sure you are sitting on them if you own mutual funds or ETFs. And you don't even know that you're sitting on a ticking time bomb because derivatives are all about leverage. Leverage on leverage on leverage. But you know, they don't really want you to think that you have a choice. You do have a choice. So they use perception management to hide these things. So what really are the most important functions? And I'm going to give you more than one today. The most important functions of these fiat markets are bank profits. That should have been really clear from the reaction since the crisis, if you didn't know it before then. And with corporate profits reaching all-time highs and using those, the bit that they've repatriated, now they haven't repatriated as much as they thought, but using the gains from the tax changes as well as the funds, some of the funds that have been repatriated to buy stocks in the corporation to put to push the price of the stock market up, even though in reality it's just making it look like it. In reality, that's not really true. It's a lot of smoke and mirrors. But hey, we want those bank profits high. And in the meantime, a rising gold price is an indication of a failing fiat currency. 
And central banks and government cannot have that. They cannot have you knowing that where your wealth is, is so vulnerable that the most likely outcome is any wealth you hold inside of this fiat system will go poof. It's going to evaporate when we go into a hyperinflationary reset circumstance. It's just what always happens. Even if it goes up, it, we're in the melt-up phase now, even if it goes up, keep in mind that the foundation, the value of the underlying fiat money is on a relentless march toward zero. And the only difference between inflation and hyperinflation is the speed of that descent. And I hope you get that. If not, we'll be talking about it again. So what I also find quite interesting is that when you don't have to have the physical metal and you can sell as much gold, as much silver, as much oil as you want through these paper contracts that are so cheap and that's just a button push. Well, it's pretty easy to control. Now, as of yesterday, spot gold, which is a contract, is on the longest losing streak since when? Hmm, 18, I'm sorry, 1989. Well, let's see what was happening back in the 80s. We were concluding the transition to a pure debt-based system. So we were going fully off the gold standard. Did they want people to understand that? No, they did not. So they created the spot market to generate that volatility and keep people away. And what's really interesting is where you have super, I mean, all the hyperinflation went into the stock market and the bond market and the real estate market. Those were targeted for reflation, the reflation trade that Wall Street talked about constantly. The only assets that haven't participated in that are the real assets, the real money of gold and silver. Is this a coincidence? I don't think so. But what we also know is that central banks have been accumulating gold like crazy, especially since 2008. And JP Morgan is sitting on the largest physical silver hoard in history. Why? Don't you think you should do what the smartest guys in the room are doing for themselves? Because let me show you what they know. Now what they're going to show you is that gold and silver are super volatile. That's what they're going to show you. But oh my goodness, when you step back and you look a little further, what you see is a cup formation, which means that the smart money is accumulating quietly. They don't want you to, but they are. And that's happening in both gold and in silver. And what happens when we go into that hyperinflation? Well, there's Venezuela. In terms of the spot market, you will see gold and silver start to move towards its intrinsic fundamental value. Just like you will see all those fiat money products drop down, burn off that inflation that's built into there and move to their intrinsic fundamental value. A hundred percent of the time, I would always rather have the lion's share of my wealth in an undervalued or fairly valued asset that is in a long-term positive trend then in a negative asset which is exactly what the fiat currencies are always 
and we have to hold dollars, that's still our tool of barter. We don't really have a choice. But you don't have to have all your wealth in there. So what physical gold and silver really are is the ultimate diversifier. Because in a lot of these, especially the retirement plans, well, in some cases, there's nothing you can do. 403Bs, if you're still working there, you can't touch that. And that's mostly true in things like IRAs, uh, not IRAs, but um, 401Ks and things like that. I mean, we have to look at the underlying documentation. But in many cases, you have no access. And so what you need to do is protect it. I've developed a strategy over paying attention and looking and studying currencies since 1987. It's a big part of what the strategy is about. What are your goals? Okay, if you're sitting in fiat money wealth, okay, then at least be properly diversified. We have a formula that can help you know the most likely amount of gold and silver that you need to accomplish any of your goals. So beyond that, you know, you can always give us a call. I mean, that's a conversation. And hopefully, you know, what we love to do is really help you plan a strategy that supports wherever your current circumstances are and your goals are, et cetera. And maybe you can't do it all at once, but you want to get started as soon as possible because these markets, as I've shown you many times, and I'll keep showing it to you, are really vulnerable and a black swan event, not an event that we can anticipate. Okay, the Federal Reserve is raising rates. They're trying to do it slowly so that it doesn't trigger a stock market sell-off. Well, it's gonna to get to a point where it will anyway, but let me tell you, we won't know one second before it, they lose control or they choose to lose control. I mean, I can't tell you which that's gonna be. But what I, can I tell, what I can tell you is the sooner you get ready, the sooner you don't have to think about it. Because pretty much anybody I talk to has this gut feeling that something is wrong. There is definitely the energy of change in the air. For me, it feels a whole lot like it did back in the 60s and the 70s. And of course, I was pretty young then. I was a teenager. And even so, you could feel that something was changing. So I'm going to tell you, believe your gut. Things are changing. And you want to be in the right position to weather that change comfortably as possible. And maybe even, oh, I don't know, take advantage of it like Wall Street's going to take advantage of it. Except you're going to do it a whole lot more ethically. And if you do that, how many others can you help in this community of ours that we're developing? So that's really what happens to fiat money wealth. Presuming you still get a statement when there is a run on the system somewhere that can start anywhere. Presuming you get a statement, because I think you will, you just won't have access to anything. Well, you might need some principle, you might need some wealth to get you through some hard times. That's called savings. That is not savings. Fiat money wealth that you don't hold, you don't hold it, you don't own it. It's not savings. But physical gold and silver, yes, all savings with full intrinsic value that right now is dirt flipping cheap. Take advantage of it. I am. So if you like this, give us a thumbs up. This is part of our frequently asked questions. So make sure you send in those questions because if, if Eric or Megan see a bunch of the same kinds of questions coming in, then they're going to say, do a frequently asked question, and I will. So until next week where I'll be um, on an interview with Tom Hartman, that one will be live, and also the Reluctant Preppers will also be, um, be publishing the, the uh, coffee with Lynette that I did with Lior Gans, but it wasn't really ready for publication, so. Um, but that's okay, because you got this today, and this is a good piece, I think. Well, 
least I think so. I hope you agree. And until next week, keep in mind that shields are made of metal, not paper, not promises. Physical metal. And until then, please be safe. Bye-bye.